Hey, you second brainers. Scott Novus here with another video on what I call where not what, uh, my digital second brain. So I can remember one thing to find everything. This video in particular, I want to dive into something I've been thinking about lately called heart rolls. Uh, I've been posting on social media about that. And I really wanted to give you some tools where I've got access to my full desktop. Um, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I think we live in a, a very goal oriented culture. So many things are lumped under the baskets of goals. And when I first got into a second brain, I think I told you that it was really about learning. I wanted to be a better person and yeah, I put that in a goal. And, but when I started like reading and learning and just, I kind of became a learning junkie. Um, I thought, man, how can I make better use of what I'm learning to apply it to be a better person? And that's what led me into the discovery of sort of the second brain world. And there were two big areas. One was the idea of Nicholas Luhmann's Zettelkast and like how to work with ideas, um, thought trains, like the linking your thinking, um, super powerful, very cool. But the other one had to do with how to think about organizationally. And, you know, that's sort of Tiago Forte and his PARA system. And I found a way to blend them together along with some ideas from David Allen and uh, Michael Lindenberger. And, you know, I'm just giving you the source material. But this particular video, I want to go into the idea that if we've got smart goals, how do we achieve work by life balance? How do I do it? By having heart roles defined as well. And Everything isn't a goal. Not everything responds well to a goal. I think you've heard me say that before. There's a uh, little slide chart in a talk where I, I, I put these things together um, and, and they sort of face off with each other. But this video, I want to give you an example of how you can use this the para structure um, to create a heart roll definition. So you can actually get started. Don't make it so conceptual, but make it more practical. So what I'm, I'm sitting here looking at my daily note, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an area. And so I'm going to create a new folder and let's say the area is homeowner. Okay. Um, yeah, it could be a apartment dweller, could be cave dweller, I did, whatever you live, right? You live somewhere. Where is that space? And that's an area and you're, I'm going to guess you're going to want to take care of it. So when I think of an area that I have a responsibility that uh, like owning a new home and saving for that's a goal, but like in the space I live, I want to live in a comfortable, clean home. That's sort of a, a role that I have. Like there's no goal I could set to stop taking trash out because I want to live in a clean house, right? Even if I pay somebody else to do it, it still is work that needs to be done. So I'm going to dive into this idea and really simple, make a folder, and then I'm gonna make a new note. And this is going to be home owner uh, note index, okay? And as I've explained in my previous videos, I use the templater template engine so that when I make a new note, I can open up the dialog box and say, give me a heart roll. And it's gonna pre-populate this note with fields um, and it's going to use some cool little JavaScript uh, to, to set the date, give me an alias because maybe I'll call it something else. Um, it's my note and what tag I want to give it and if there's a, uh, a comment. But let's get into the five questions that you want to answer if you're defining a heart role. So one of the things I always tend to put in my notes is an executive summary at the top. And it's an overview. And so this note captures uh, my thoughts, the best ideas as of today. Oh, that should be, I'll just type it manually. There's a uh, really cool plugin uh, that would put the data in for me, but we'll just do this of uh, how to be the best home owner I can be. Okay. So let's get into the heart role definition. The first, the five words of heart, holistic, experiential, authentic, relational, time frame, um, And each one of them has a question. So, you know, holistic, what is this area? And it's really 
Um, it's my house, my primary residence. Okay, what if you own rental properties? That might be a radically different role of being a landlord than being a homeowner. It's not exactly the same, and there's different habits, practices, mindsets, and things that are involved with being a landlord and having rental properties than your own primary home or being a renter of somebody else's property. Um, that can change. What are the experiences I want to have as a homeowner? Well, you know, really we get in the feelings is I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to relax at home. I want a peaceful environment where I can work and the people I love feel welcome. I also want to be able to entertain friends and family. Okay? So fairly reasonable, right? But these are, you know, emotionally oriented words and like definitions. You could think of these as standards, but this is what I'm striving for. Will I get there perfectly? No, but I know what I'm oriented towards. I know what I'm aiming to achieve. I'm pointed in a direction and I have an intent to head in that direction. I'm making my home comfortable and clean. I could put, uh, you know, what makes it comfortable is that it's clean and organized. You know, I could say that. Um, makes it feel comfortable that it is clean and organized. And I can actually move that down to another question. So now this has to do with one of the things that is about being authentic. And it's like, well, what do you have to do with being authentic as a homeowner? Well, the reality is that not everything goes perfectly. Things, unexpected things happen. Uh, sometimes good, frequently not so good. And what I want to do is I want to show up in a way where I do my best, um, even if the outcome is not what I want. And that's fairly generic, but let's talk into specifics. Like this is where you could put in the behaviors or habits, like taking out, taking out the trash, or here's a big one, doing the dishes to leave the kitchen clean even if it is not my turn and not complaining about it okay um, trying to make sure I pick up after myself so you can go as far as you want but there's sort of like little things that I can do that will make sure that the house stays clean and comfortable um, and, it, and it's orderly. And sometimes, you know, like who does the dishes and chore division and everything else could be a whole other thing. But at the end of the day, there are certain things that I'm going, I want to be able to strive to do um, that I believe are going to produce the experience I want. And here comes a really big one, right? I will tell you, there's, there is one thing about our home, and this was actually, this is a very real value. We want, because sometimes when you think about who, so I'll do this, who does this affect? My wife, my kids, my neighbors, the people closest to us, uh, my extended family, my friends. Hey, I'll put this up above my neighbors, the dog. the dog. And as soon as I saw kids, I remembered something about a core experience we wanted to have. We want our home to be the center of our kids' lives while they are in school. And what that meant was it is safe and welcoming for them and their friends. We wanted people here. We wanted to be in sort of the middle of things. That's a very specific goal. Not everybody wants that. Everybody wants the world to be like that. But that was really important to us. That's important to me. And in sitting down and putting together this idea of like who, I'm now getting clear that who's affected by this role that I'm taking as homeowner. Um, 
and how long? And you know, this one's like decades. Like I'm 20 years into this house, and I probably will be here for another 20 years. I don't really want to move. So for as long as I own the house. So those are five questions. And you're getting a sense as I fill these things out is I'm starting to get really intentional about what I want my life to be like in the house. And let's say when we get down into relational, um, uh, I'll give you another example of that is uh, I won't fill it out to the same degree that I filled this one out, but there are other areas it could get into. So let's say the area is uh, CEO. I'm the CEO and founder of my company. And so I'm going to say the chief. I put an underscore so that this note will always sort first of all the notes in its folder. Uh, Okay, and then I will go ahead and say, yep, give me a heart roll template, bang. Uh, really similar, but let's skip down to the who. And so in the who, one of the things I could be looking at is, you know, my uh, partners, my employees, but also I'll separate out um, my customers. Okay, so Good stuff, but let's say I want to get really specific. Well, one of the things I could do is say uh, one of the most important people uh, to me in the company is my president, uh, Brandon Wheely, who runs uh, Game Truck Licensing. So I want to connect him specifically because there's information and notes about Brandon I don't want to lose. And I picked this idea up from my good friend, Chris Roth, who started keeping notes about his friends so he could remember things about them. And one of the things I really love about this idea is that it really helps connect people to the areas of your life. And so simply putting Brandon's name in, clicking on his name, creates a brand new note. And you can see under CEO, look, there's Brandon. There's what I said, chief executive will sort at the top of the list. But you can, there are a million systems out there for CRM, which it's a brand is not a customer, so that's a bit ridiculous, but relationship management. You could find the Harvey McKay 66 and turn that into a template that you could fill out. I'm sure that there's a dozen different tools. A really simple one is called Ford. Um, so let's call it People Card. And for the People Card, it is family. Tell me about their family. Tell me about their occupation. Tell me about what they do for recreation. Tell me about their dreams. And using this technique um, really allows me to um, capture useful shorthand information um, that makes it easier for me to personalize my interaction and improve my relationships. Because I just, I'm able to pull up details I wouldn't remember otherwise. And so it's just like, I happen to know that Brandon, you know, one of his recreation, and you could say favorites, is he really likes uh, Makers 66, or 46, I think that's it. He really likes Makers, loves bourbon, uh, a big fan of Tito's, um, but he also plays golf. Hope I'm not giving away too much personal information. Um, but it's this idea that he really loves playing golf with his dad. And that starts to begin to um, capture information that you may come across details. And maybe it's your spouse and she mentioned something she wants for Christmas. Perfect place if I go back to whether it's husband or homeowner. Um, people can be involved in multiple areas. Like it would make more sense for there to be a people card for my wife under husband, but also she could be linked into homeowner. So let's do that. We'll say Stacy Novis and we'll fire up. Uh, uh, you know, obviously I know a lot of stuff in there, but it could be like the dream could be what she wants for Christmas this year. I know that one of her dreams is to do an Alaskan cruise, um, but she's also involved as part of the homeowner. So 
I can link her um, here as well. And what I love about Obsidian, quick, you know, just this, the, one of the best things is you can step back and say, what el where else is she mentioned? And she is absolutely mentioned in this index. Oh, and I better add her into my husband index. Um, and now if you go back to Stacy, you can see what she's involved in, where she's connected, the parts of our areas where we overlap. And this, this ability to get that sort of high level view, this is awesome, I love it. But let me go back and sort of try to put a, a a bow around this. The idea is, you know a lot about projects. I don't know how you can be a professional owner business without knowing how to execute projects. Take your favorite tool, take your favorite approach. I'll probably do a bunch of videos on all the different ways you can plan to do projects. But what I don't see nearly as much content on is the idea of getting clear about the roles in your life. You got your goals, let's get those roles clear. You know, those things you're trying to finish things you don't want to finish and that's what this framework lets you do is it gets helps you get clear about um how you want to show up in the world especially for people that you care about and i have found this to be extraordinarily useful because it this clarity helps me make the time so i can put forward the effort to produce the feelings and the effects that I want for the people that I care about. And I hope you find that useful.